Welcome to uh, Top Story now here on France Bank. Now, the UN is today hosting emergency talks on the Horn of Africa drought crisis in Rome. It comes as uh, aid groups scramble to raise money for an estimated 12 million people on the brink of starvation. The UN Secretary General, Ban Ki moon, has uh, called on donor countries to come up with 1.1 billion euros. Now, it's needed in aid for two regions of southern Somalia that were declared famine zones by the United Nations earlier this month. Very shortly, we'll be talking to uh, our international affairs editor, Anna Young about what needs to be done. But first, this report on the thousands of people fleeing into neighbouring Kenya and Ethiopia. This is the largest refugee camp in the world. Each day, more than 1,300 Somali fleeing starvation arrive here. Among them, many children suffering from serious malnutrition. A UN delegation visited the camp on Friday. Officials say less than half of the kids will survive. General food isn't enough for many of the children arriving, so what we're seeing is thousands of children in need of special supplementary nutrition. In Somalia, the UN says millions of people have yet to receive aid. The Islamists, who control parts of the country, imposed a ban on food aid last year. Al-Shabaab militants accuse the UN of exaggerating the gravity of the crisis and refuse to let aid workers back in. The World Food Programme is considering food drops to reach isolated families, but funds are scarce. The Food and Agriculture Organisation wants the international community to move fast. We are estimating 3.7 million uh, Somalis that need emergency assistance. We should consider this immoral, that we still have children dying of hunger in the 21st century. French Agriculture Minister Bruno Le Maire also took the trip to the Dadaab refugee camp. He says Paris has called on its G20 partners to increase their financial participation. The Prime Minister and the French President have decided to put some more 5 million euros to uh, support the efforts that are made here uh, on the field. And it is also a clear signal of the willingness of the G20 chairmanship, the chair is uh, headed by France, to uh, reinvest in agriculture. Le Maire is expected to report to a UN emergency meeting in Rome on Monday. So, our international uh, affairs editor, Annette Young, with me here in the studio. Um, there are extraordinary numbers we're talking about, uh, aren't they? How did this famine manage to, to just become so widespread so quickly? It's extraordinary. It really is, isn't it, Stuart? I mean, effectively what we have now is a triangle of hunger, if you like, in areas affecting Djibouti, Ethiopia, Kenya, Sudan and Uganda. Now, the UN says tens of thousands of people have been killed. This is the worst drought in 60 years, um, worse than what we saw back in the mid-1980s where we saw, you know, the likes of Bob Geldof and co sure. running all those aid uh, concerts. Um, and we're talking about somewhere in the order of... 10 million people needing uh, emergency uh, rations to survive and the risk, of course, of cholera and measles and other deadly diseases. Now, the problem, of course, is the total number of Somali uh, refugees who fled into Ethiopia and Kenya, which are already having their own problems, um, is estimated now to be more than half a million people. And, uh, of course, the issue with Somalia is its relentless conflict, which is making things so extraordinarily difficult. Um, now, the famine was neither sudden nor a surprise. Over a year ago, um, experts were predicting that there was going to be low rainfall, and there's been two rainy seasons where the rainfall has been very minimal indeed. Um, and uh, as a result, aid organisations are using this uh, UN call for help to sort of, you know, demand that the time is now. Yet, at the same time, they're saying that they're furious because this is the fact that it isn't a surprise. that they Obviously, the conflict in Somalia has been going on for years. There were, as I said, uh, forecasts that uh, the rain was going to be very low. Um, and, you know, they, people are saying this should not be a surprise to any officials as such. Now, the other, of course, issue is what's happening is this, the food prices, which is, of course, connected to the global uh, economic crisis as well. And just to give you some example of just how high they're reaching food prices, for instance, like for the commodity corn, which has been sold in Mogadishu, uh, last month was selling at 660 US dollars a tonne, an increase of 106% 
in the last year or so. Now, in order to have a look at just how widespread these areas are that are indeed being affected, let's have a look at this graphic that uh, our graphics department has done. And as you can see here, um, most of Kenya, Ethiopia, Opia and Djibouti are in crisis. Uh, with parts of those countries, along with the bulk of Somalia, now at the next level up, which is code red, which indicates an emergency. But even more worrying, and I don't know if it's that clear in, in that graphic, are the designated brown parts, which is sort of uh, the southern and central parts of Somalia, which shows a catastrophic famine, which is, of course, being made worse by the fact that those areas are controlled by the al-Qaeda-linked group, the uh, al-Shabaab, -Shahab, rather, which uh, has declared those regions being off limits to aid groups. Yeah, it's incredible to see the scale of it in that uh, in that graphic there. Uh, I mean, as you say, uh, you mentioned the violence, you also mentioned the, the um, Islamic groups there uh, linked with al-Qaeda. I mean, that, that's causing a, a massive problem because they can't actually get the food out. That's right. It's, it, it really is adding such an extra layer of complication to what clearly is already a horrendous situation. Now, the Shabab, in fact, denies that a famine is taking place um, and, and has completely... Uh, ignore the fact that tens of thousands of people have in fact died. Now the UN's World Food Programme can't get in there and can't operate without their permission. Already 14 of their employees have been killed since 2008 and they say that this is the worst area in the whole world that they find themselves trying to operate in. Now the Shabab did indicate back in early July that it would allow some aid groups to go in. But uh, it then changed course in the last few days, saying that uh, the World Food Programme and others would not be welcome. They refused to accept aid from Christian or Western uh, groups, which means obviously millions will starve. And the other complicating factor is the American government bans um, material aid to the Shabab, which of course complicates aid efforts. Um, and as well, aid officials are very worried that if they pay these so-called taxes, if indeed they do get into these areas, to these militant groups, that they themselves could be facing criminal prosecution. So it just gives you an idea of just how messy the situation is. All right, Annette, uh, it's a very complicated situation, as you say. One will continue to follow here on Fonson. Okay, Annette Young there, our international affairs correspondent. And that was uh, Top Story. Stay with us. News coming up. <laughs> A land rich with opportunity. A land that has it all. A dynamic and open economy. A strategic location. Diverse resources. Thailand for sustainable business growth.
where reliability is a tradition and creativity blossoms, where trade and investment prosper. Thailand, land of opportunities.